I love the Master System, I really do. And Alex Kidd in Miracle World is so synonymous with this console that it's built into the original batch of Mark II systems. Just look how small and perfect it is. Ah! Just like your website could be with sponsor Squarespace. For this reason, every kid who owned a Master System in the early 90s played Alex Kidd in Miracle World. I even heard of some kids who didn't realise it was built in, but got to play it anyway when a cartridge wasn't read properly and Alex Kidd was booted by default. Originally, it said that the game began development based around the Dragon Ball manga series, but Sega lost the IP and so it was rehashed into this Alex Kidd world. Kotaro Hayashida, the character's creator, confirmed this in 2000. And 18, saying it was only after we came up with a plan to restart the project as Alex Kidd in Miracle World that we started thinking about Mario and looking for ways in which to differentiate the title from it. You can see the similarities to Dragon Ball and Son Goku lingering through, such as Alex's insatiable appetite, similar fighting moves, vehicles, and even in game characters. And I haven't even mentioned the similar landscapes of cliffs and water, the orbs, the fact they can both projectile fire. It's never ending. Plus, of course, Son Goku is a monkey-like boy. He's got a tail and other features that explains Alex Kidd's similar look. With this character came a new name, of course. Alex Kidd Osaru which is a pun on a Japanese phrase roughly meaning mythical giant monkey beast house prince, which fits it all together. Still, with the sights now on Mario, it's clear why it became a built-in title. It's just such a clean and straightforward game, and if you're trying to get a console to compete with the NES, you want a title that's as compelling as that little dungo-wearing plumber. It's fast, varied, well-programmed, and entertaining. Plus, I can almost hear that iconic theme tune in my sleep. It's all ingrained in my brain. With those rose-tinted spectacles, the nostalgia is pure and strong. But there's a problem, which those spectacles have been hiding for many years. Because I've only recently realised that Alex Kidd in Miracle World is frustrating as hell. And for that reason, I hate it. And it's often hard to see through the nostalgia and realise that. Don't get me wrong, I love the character, I love the world, I love the nostalgia, I love that you start falling down a huge pit. Look, my friends at 16 Bits of Glass even made me this incredible stained glass window of Alex the Kid. See, I even know his name. And I get a beautiful kick of the past every time I look at it. But the difficulty is stupidly high from the go, especially when you're a kid. Actually, it's more precision. You have to be so precise. One false move from his floating movements and you're dead. Unleash one of those evil flying things and you're dead. Fail a bloody Jenkin match and you die. And then you have to start all over again from the start of the level or even game. What the hell? So when I heard that a new version of Miracle World was out, I bought it because, well, it's warming nostalgia. But I am not looking forward to the gameplay ahead, unless there's some serious tweaks. It's come a long way from a game that started out as a fan remake. I remember first seeing it mentioned in 2018 on Josian's Twitter feed, and by then it had already been in development for a while. But you could see the love that was going into it, hence why Sega did their wonderfully Sega thing of licensing it as an official remake. It's about time though, 30 years have passed since any official Alex Kidd game, Sega are like Del Boy, they've got no real direction, pouring money here and there, but then leaping on opportunities when they crop up. It's not a bad thing, but, you know, 30 years. 
Speaking to Nintendo Life in 2020, Jose confirmed his nostalgic love for the game being one of the first games he played, and so under the label of Jankin Team, along with Merge Games, we find ourselves in June 2021 with both digital and physical editions at our fingertips. I've bought the Steam version, which is $14.99, and this Switch box set for $54.99 from Signature Edition Games, which I've got to say looks pretty damn nice. Just like your brand new website will with Squarespace. Now this is my last slot with Squarespace, so I'd like to give them huge thanks for sponsoring this channel this year. They remain the place to go to get your website and domain up and running within hours rather than months. You know the score, but the number of templates and customizable options they have remains incredible. You can integrate all your social media effortlessly and just create an incredible space to showcase your stuff that works beautifully on desktop and mobile alike. Just head over to squarespace.com slash nostalgia nerd to design something for free and then use the code nostalgia nerd to grab 10% off your first purchase of a site or custom domain. So this is the first product I've bought from Signature Edition, and it does look very nice. The card feels pretty weighty, and the printing looks quality. Inside we get a nice arrangement, some good padding, and the usual array of contextually specific trinkets. An art book, a signed certificate of authenticity, some nice enamel pins featuring Alex's array of vehicles, the rich sod, a CD soundtrack, CD, nice and retro. And this exquisite cash bag, perfect for when you need to buy a motorcycle from a dodgy tradesman in a hut. Inside is his signature medallion, which I will definitely never wear, but it looks nice. Right at the bottom you also get a pack of Jankenpon playing cards, which essentially converts rock, paper, scissors into a card game, so you don't have to use those clunky old cumbersome hand appendages except for holding the cards. Here's the game, rated 7, when in reality it probably needs to be rated 18 for the difficulty alone. And inside the physical game box there's also a manual, ah, memories of manuals, and a keyring. Plus you can reverse the case design, and I believe this is the same with every physical version, not just this signature games edition. Unfortunately, Due to Brexit, we don't get the pre-order coin. Ah yes, the sweet taste of xenophobia. As you can see, it loads up on my Switch Lite looking beautiful, but most of the footage from here on out will be from the Steam version, mainly because I downloaded that version before this version arrived. Right, so title screen, it looks nice, but do you know what looks nicer? The options screen, because it has this option, infinite lives. Let me tell you now, this review would end this second if it wasn't for this option, because as you'll see, this release has all the exact same frustrations of the original, maybe a couple more. This option is quite cute as well, you can specify what you want kid to chomp on. Western releases originally got substituted with a burger because we can recognize that, whilst Japan got an onigiri. But you can also have a Spanish omelette now, or fish and chips. Look at him, just slamming fish and chips into his gluttonous face. What an absolute animal. The story seems a bit different. I don't remember everyone turning to stone before, and yes, the levels are now strewn with stone-like people who you can somehow chat to. But look at this, I'm playing with an Xbox pad, so press the right trigger, and whoa, we are back in Alex Kid glory. Except this time, it now takes up the entire width of 16 by nine. Nice. Now this doesn't plonk you in the original game, it's a retro reskin of this new Unity based engine, but it feels the same. This version of Alex Kidd is very, very similar to the original, and so switching the visuals is really just a preference. 
Do you like the old? Or the absolutely eye-popping, beautiful pixel creations of the new? Because these new visuals really are a sight to behold. So much love has been poured in here. So much detail. And honestly, it's a delight to play through like this. Just look at the differences between the bosses, the structures, the shop, even the map. Everything is beautifully illustrated. Well, apart from this placeholder sprite, that remains in the code. I'm not sure why that is. It, it's horror. It's, it's just horror. But I actually found playing with the old, distraction-free graphics easier. I also feel that collision detection is a bit better on the old graphics. Everything is better defined and the hitboxes feel sculpted around these designs rather than the new. But that's likely because it's harder to see collisions on the new style graphics. Especially with bouncing scenery and even Alex Kidd himself bopping about all the time. It's interesting though, because if you look at the Unity assets, you find that various fixes have been applied to the old graphical style to make it match the scenery of the new hitboxes and platforms and other collision elements. There's all this scenery and part fixes which have been added to the original world layout, so this definitely isn't a one-to-one -one recreation of old. Beside that, Alex Kidd is his usual slippery self, floating through the air and hardly ever landing where you want him to, although the physics are a little different from the original. Less moon-like is a way I'd describe it. But then, when you've spent most of your life playing on a PAL system, less moon-like is a standard part of the territory, along with music that sounds less zoned out. As normal, the longer you hold down jump, the further Alex Kidd will go. And this mechanic, although a familiar one used in various games, somehow feels a bit out of place in this landscape and actually doesn't sometimes register as you'd hope. I think it all comes down to the game needing so much precision, but then failing to give you the controls to conduct that precision. But this is the life of the Alex Kidd fan. We've become accustomed to it. Just like some of these bosses who are just utter, utter bastards. Die! Why won't you die? Oh, okay, you died quite easily. I just had to punch you repeatedly in the face. Okay, fine. So this level design also is a Alex Kidd fan thing because there's just so many blocks, more than you'd ever get on a Mario game. Good job he's got a massive fist. But the level design can also be clever and cunning, which is nice, but also, God, just let me progress. So as you storm from level to level, dying many, many times, you become ever more thankful for that infinite lives mode, especially on the vehicle levels, where I tend to lose my vehicle in about half a second. Now sure, achievements aren't unlocked or anything on this mode, but who cares? I don't care. That is until I realise that actually now this is far too easy, and I blasted through the entire game in about two hours. Now, despite the game telling me that achievements wouldn't be unlocked if I played with infinite lives, completing the game like this still opened up the boss rush mode, which just lets you battle all the bosses one after the other in a theatre-like context, if that's your thing. You also get the classic mode unlocked, which is a recreation of the original Master System game, aspect ratio, lack of statues and all. This isn't the original ROM though, it is a recreation, although it's pretty accurate, and playing through that mode lets you appreciate the subtle changes to the main game, 
the wider view angle is welcoming and Alex Kidd feels weighted a little different. He's still a floaty, cumbersome nut stain, but it feels a little more acceptable. And the game is fun, it was enjoyable. It's nice to see the new take on things. For example, the old floating power-up that used to just flash your body is now a rideable stick. And this weird little power-up has little Alex kids running about kicking the villain's ass. So that's nice. The new backgrounds also look incredible. The changing weather, the recomposed music. I mean, just look and hear the difference between these castle scenes. It's bloody delightful. But I wish there was some kind of middle ground, some halfway house between the easy infinite life and three life frustration hell. Perhaps that's just me improving my game playing. It's even easier if you get the power up to reveal the boss's Jankin moves, or if you've memorized the moves from the Master System days. Plus, all the money you've collected, you get to keep even when you die. So when the money bags respawn, you can just collect them again, and before you know it, you've just won the caravan on Bullseye, and you've got more cash than you could ever spend in any of these little corner shops. But even so, I was still having a lot more fun with this version than I did with the original. Although that's hard to put it in context because as a kid, I had a load of fun with it at the time, but if I played the original now, I wouldn't have as much fun as I did with this one. The frustration was eased to a point where if this was a longer game, then it would be incredible. There would be no stopping it. And if you did want a longer game, well, the ending hints that you didn't quite sort everything out because you didn't kill every enemy. So I guess I could go back through the game and kill every enemy, but I'm not doing that. Or I could play without infinite lives, but I'm not doing that either. It depends very much on who you are as to what you'll get from this game. If you found the original Alex Kid an effortless joy, then you'll have no issue on the normal game mode and you'll love the new surroundings and details. I'm sure you'll thoroughly enjoy it. But it's not for me because I'm too crap in that version of the game. It's worth mentioning that I think the game will need a couple of patches, as even though I kept selecting infinite lives in the options screen, it kept resetting it to normal mode whenever I started a game. In the end, I had to pause the game and enable it on the fly, but it's a nice feature that you can turn that on and off as you go. I've mentioned this at the end, as I'm sure it'll get fixed, and, you know, the ancient history. Imagine doing that with the original cartridges. Ah. So I guess this is the end of my Alex Kidd DX run. I might play it again in the future, but then I've got so many other games to play, I probably won't. It was a fun two hours, it brought back old memories, I had highs, I had lows, and I can always play rock, paper and scissors with my new set of playing cards. Whiling the evenings away. Until next time, I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo.